Over the last couple of years, I've made a few VR games using Godot. These projects have always been a blast to work on, and recently my friend David Snowpick and I had a pretty crazy idea. What if we made a Godot VR game, but we were only allowed to work on the project inside VR? A game jam like all the others we've collaborated on before, but this time we can't even touch our desktop computers. How feasible would that be? Allow me to provide a little backstory as to why this idea would be possible in the first place. The Godot editor. You know it, you love it, you use it on your desktop or laptop computer. It goes beyond that though. Godot is so lightweight that you can run the editor on Android devices, and thousands of people do that every day. People are doing game development from their Android phones, tablets, and apparently some have even downloaded Godot onto their smart TV. Fun fact, the operating system used on Meta VR headsets and others is based on Android. So wouldn't it be interesting if we could get the editor running right on the headset? It does. Since 2024, the Godot XR editor has been available on the MetaQuest 3 and Pro. I think it's also available on the Quest 2 now as well. You can find it right on the Horizon store, download it, and get hacking on your next project right now. This has some seriously exciting implications for the development of VR apps, which I'll talk about soon. But how far could this editor be pushed? That question is what led us to this project. David and I work for W4 Games, and we currently work on a project with folks from Meta. We did a talk with our friend Fredia at GodotCon Boston highlighting a lot of the recent work we've done on this project, including this XR editor stuff. I think the excitement from that talk and GodotCon in general amped us up and instead of taking some time to recuperate like normal people, we decided to join the Godot Wild Jam, which started the day after getting home. The Godot Wild Jam is a popular monthly jam that lasts a little over a week. Three years ago, I actually won the Godot Wild Jam the first time I ever entered it with a puzzle platformer I made called Combinoclops. So, we're doing this. And the first question we had to answer is, how were we going to collaborate on the same Godot project using the XR editor? Normally, we would do this on our desktops with Git. And it turns out it's easy to do that on the headset as well. Termux is an open source terminal emulator on Android, and it works great on the Quest. Termux. Termux is the greatest. Could we have done this without Termux? No, well, I mean, we, we would have done it differently, I guess. We would have, you know, gotten a, a Android app to do, like, Git checkouts, an Android app to, like, be a text editor. But, you know, just I'm so used to doing everything in the command line on my Linux machine, having Termux and getting a normal Linux environment, like, filled in so many of the gaps otherwise I would have had on the headset. Being able to have a command line there was just fantastic. I don't know if it's just me, but using a terminal in a VR panel was a lot of fun. Something about having a giant terminal floating wherever you want in 3D space made me feel like I was plugged into the matrix. The theme was announced, Expedition. Normally this is where David and I would hop into a call and brainstorm game ideas together. However, in the spirit of our project, David had an excellent point that we should do this brainstorming session in VR. So we grabbed our headsets, hopped on a meeting in VR, and put our thinking caps on. We liked the theme, and we did have quite a few ideas. None of them felt quite right though, and it had to be the perfect fit since it was a VR game. We've worked on a few jams together, and whenever we've brainstormed previously, we have done a really good job of like coming to an idea fairly quickly that we were both very excited about. And this time it, it didn't feel that way. It took us a little while to kind of find something. Yeah, we went through a whole list. I went to my notebook to just look at general game ideas, and yeah, we had to go through many rounds. Thankfully, VR Lemmings was in those notes, and that just kind of, <laughs> that just kind of hit right away. So we started working on lemmings in VR. We knew we wanted our lemming creatures to have physics-based movement, since that would have the potential for more chaotic and fun interactions. We also figured we could animate our little characters with the squash and stretch of some jumping movement if we just made them little blobs. So that's what we did. We can have these blob characters that we can animate in engine and they're going on an expedition and i think you said even in that initial brainstorm yeah they're going to like some blob utopia <laughs> and then it just completely stuck i think i originally called it blobtopia and i thought that didn't fit together really well so then i was like blobotopia and then i was like well if it's blobotopia then these aren't blobs these are blobos this is, so then this is true yeah yeah it's just the logical <laughs> conclusion thus the project was named expedition to Blobatopia. But what were we going to do for visual assets? We don't really have like an asset creation pipeline at our disposal mm -hmm. in the headset. So we knew that we were going to probably be restricted to pre-made asset packs. I think we both kind of knew we were probably going to end up using something from Kenny or Kay. We primarily ended up using Kenny's 
platformer kit, I think it's called. We did end up primarily using Kenny's 3D platformer pack, which got things looking decent pretty fast. Then we set up a quick level system where the blobos would spawn in at one portal, and then the player helps them get to another portal, or watches them fall to their demise. There were a couple of things that were particularly challenging, and one that I didn't expect at all is making collision shapes. So oh, in yeah. Godot, you can make the basic, you know, box, sphere, cylinder. If you want to do something more custom, what I would normally do is I would make the custom shape as another mesh in Blender. And that's totally off the table here. And we needed to make that ramp, which there's no set shape to make that ramp. For the ramp, it was, it's the only time uh, that I ever in Godot have just like gone in and written out the points of a collision shape by hand and just made like a triangle shape. And I, I don't think I'll ever do it again. <laughs> that was tricky. That was yeah. tricky for sure. Yeah. And that was probably one of the biggest pain points. Once the architecture for switching levels was in place, the work on creating levels began. This is when the fact that we were working on all of this in VR had a positive impact. One of the unfortunate parts of making a game in VR is that the typical iterative workflow is work on your desktop, export to your headset, put the headset on, test the game, take the headset off, and repeat. The sheer amount of times you have to do this when working on something like level design is astronomical. But if you're already working on the headset, it cuts down on a lot of that wasted time. Level design was the next thing we were coming up on. And this is an interesting game idea because it is primarily level design. Making the levels in VR, there are some pros to that. When you're in the engine, you're playing the scene that you're designing and like then you can pull the panel up and you can move things, you can see them move in real time. That is really cool. That's really useful. For me, it was the most useful at Sort of the end of a, a level's design process once I have all of the things in there and like trying to figure out the size and the location of everything uh, it was very nice to be able to just like slide it a little bit and then immediately go in there and start seeing like okay how does that feel mm -hmm. which would be much harder not on the headset where you're deploying to the headset over the USB cable because you just have that extra weight you move something a little bit and then you wait 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> to come in, oh, no, not quite right. Don't mm -hmm. move it again. Wait another 30 seconds. On your computer screen, it never looks the same as when you're actually, yeah. like when you have the headset on, you never know how it's going to look. It's really useful. And mm -hmm. I want to find more reasons <laughs> to use that. <laughs> so we made some more levels for the game, adding a few more items and interactions along the way. The development experience worked so well, I decided one day during the jam to do some work at a coffee shop down the road. I packed up my headset, Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, and met up with my friend Quinn. Once I got my hands on a latte, it was time to cement my name in history as the first ever person to do VR game development in VR in a coffee shop. Maybe. I don't know, don't quote me on that. And sure, ultimately this was just a silly side mission for laughs, but it actually worked really well. One perk of using the headset here that I wouldn't have had using my laptop is that in my headset I can have multiple panels sized and positioned wherever I'd like, which is nice because those large panels covered up the faces of people that were probably giving me concerned looks. Anyways, we finished the project up by adding as much polish as we could, decorating the environment, adding music, sounds, and some visual effects, all from the XR editor. And I gotta say, I'm proud of what we ended up with. We made a solid VR game using only our headsets, proving that our initial idea wasn't crazy at all. Overall success of the game jam. What are your thoughts on this? I think this is one of the better games that we've made. I'm honestly happy with all of the games that we've made for jams together, but I think this one was particularly good. I mean, especially the fact that we kind of set out just kind of like as an experiment of just collaborating on something and only working in VR. That alone makes this a complete success uh, in mm. my book. It makes me excited for it. It makes me hope that more people try to use this in the future. Yeah. And the and the game that we made ended up being a pretty good game too. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, this was a super fun project to work on. I was surprised at how easy it was to do this on the headset. I mean, there's always, you know, working in a new environment, there's always like little things that take a while to get used to and tiny little annoyances. But I, I was really surprised at, at just how well it worked and how easy it was to, to work in that environment. If you made it this far into the video, Thank you for watching. If you have a MetaQuest headset, I highly recommend you check out the Godot XR editor on the Meta Horizon store. And if you're a company that needs help with the Godot project, definitely check out W4 Games. I'll leave a link to the website right here. Thanks again.